Hello everyone, my name is Robius and today I will share with you all a new episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History, the series where we compare the representations of characters, factions, events, and locations depicted within one of the Assassin's Creed games to their actual history. Please be warned of major story spoilers ahead. For today's episode we will be exploring the history of the French politician Maximilien de Robespierre. To begin I will share with you some background information to cover his pre-game history. Then we will cover his appearance within Assassin's Creed Unity during the in-game history segment, and lastly we will analyze the differences between how he was represented in the game to his actual life. Starting with the pre-game history, Maximilien François Marie Isidore de Robespierre was born in Arras, France on May 6, 1758, to Maximilien Barthélemy François de Robespierre and Jacqueline Marguerite Carreau. Maximilien was the eldest of the four children, and his mother died in 1764. He also lost his father in 1777, leaving him and his siblings to be raised by their maternal grandfather and aunts. Robespierre received an advanced education and, in 1769, was enlisted at the school of Lycée Louis Le Grand. His education continued until he was 23 when he finished his training and became a lawyer, having come to admire the Roman Republic and the philosophies of Jean-Jacques Rousseau he had learned. After graduating, Robespierre was accepted into the Arras Bar as a lawyer and later became a criminal judge in 1782. He soon declined this position, in part because he opposed the death penalty at the time, and returned to practicing law while representing the poor. In this time, he wrote many political essays and papers, eventually participating in a political discussion in 1788 on the topic of allowing the French provincial government to be elected. Soon after, Louis XVI announced new elections for all provinces. Robespierre therefore ran for the position and was successfully elected the fifth deputy of the third estate of Artois to the estates general. He became part of the National Assembly when it was formed, and was later part of the Constituent Assembly once it was established. He was an important speaker for many topics, such as the Declarations of the Rights of Man, and was soon considered a leader amongst the extreme left of the political groups. Robespierre soon joined another organization, known as the Jacobin Club, which was only considered somewhat extremist at the time. However, following the initiation of the French Revolution, by 1791, he and his allies dominated the club. Following the failed attempt by the royal family to flee, tensions escalated, and many, including Robespierre, proclaimed themselves neither monarchists nor republicans. On September 30th of the same year, after the dissolution of the Constituent Assembly, Robespierre and Pétion were considered the two most incorruptible and pure patriots of the French people. In February 1792, a Girondist leader, Jacques Pierre Brissot, demanded that the Legislative Assembly declare war on Austria, which Robespierre strongly opposed, believing that this would lead to militarism and could potentially be turned against France's revolution. Tensions escalated between the Girondists and the Jacobins, with war eventually being declared with Austria despite Robespierre's protests. In April of 1792, he started a newspaper named Le Défenseur de la Constitution to justify his actions against the Girondist accusations and to share his economic and political opinions with the masses. The Jacobins urged France to create a popular militia to defend their country, as they opposed the military officer class and even publicly discredited their rival, the Marquis de Lafayette, to prevent a potential coup d'état that they anticipated. In early June, Robespierre proposed to the assembly the official dissolution of the monarchy, which led the insurrectionary forces of the Paris Commune to storm the Tuileries Palace and try to forcibly remove the king and the royal family themselves. Once the royal family was secured with the legislative assembly, the Jacobins pushed for the creation of a revolutionary tribunal. In the same time, after losing command of the French Northern Army, Lafayette and many other officers fled France, sensing revolution was in the air. Robespierre became first deputy for Paris to the National Convention in September, and was soon after accused of wanting a dictatorship by the Girondists Marc David de la Source and Louvet de Couvray. Robespierre responded by delivering a profound speech, defending himself and the Jacobin Club, and turning the accusations to the Girondists, for which his position was solidified and that of his rivals was tarnished. Following the Armand de Fer incident, which revealed all of the king's counter-revolutionary plots, Robespierre claimed that although the monarchy had been removed, because the royalty still lived, the only function Louis could hold was as a threat to liberty and to national peace. He believed the king should be given the death penalty, the queen should go to trial, and their son, the Dauphin, should be imprisoned, all to avoid civil war. On January 21st, 1793, Louis XVI was executed in La Place de la Révolution. It would technically be around this point where Robespierre was first introduced in Assassin's Creed Unity, although the precise time is vague as we first see him through the memories of Latouche. He is introduced as a Templar ally who uses new information provided to him to begin formulating his plans for the reign of terror to eliminate the politically corrupt. Historically, following the king's death, Robespierre and Danton worked together to destroy the reputations of their rivals, the Girondists. The Jacobin Club soon after declared themselves in a state of insurrection against the corrupt deputies and formed an insurrectionary committee with an army of 80,000 sans-culottes partisans. After surrounding the National Convention, the 29 leaders of the Girondists were arrested by the Jacobin's men, as was demonstrated in the game. In March of 1793, a revolutionary tribunal was established and the Committee of General Security began to manage the country's internal police, with the reign of terror beginning on September 5, 1793. 
soon after the Loi des Suspects was passed on September 17, 1793, which essentially allowed anyone branded as an enemy of the revolution to be arrested, as was briefly shown in Unity when Robespierre had the overzealous spy Didier Patton fictionally arrested for discovering the Templar Order. Historically, Robespierre enthralled the nation with his speeches and soon had a large portion of the population supporting the terror ideology since there was no room for mercy when punishing the guilty. Anyone considered counter-revolutionary or associated to the old aristocracy was publicly executed by guillotine. In early 1794, Danton was removed from his position of power due to his moderate view on terror and in reason of various political and financial accusations made against him. This eventually led Danton and his allies, among many others, to be guillotined by their former party members, as was also demonstrated in unity. Following a few subsequent assassination attempts on Robespierre, the law of 22 Prairial came into place, which allowed a tribunal to condemn people without the need of witnesses. Certain historians claim that Robespierre supported this to lead him closer to a dictatorship, however many others oppose this theory. Robespierre was also a participant in the decree by the National Convention to create an official religion for France, known historically as the Cult of the Supreme Being. Celebrations were held for the new religion, which concentrated on the existence of a god and the immortality of the human soul. However, many of Robespierre's allies were concerned by his behavior during these events, some even claiming that he would depict himself as a god. Unity had a great tie-in for this segment, as the game had Elise and Arnaud drug Robespierre with a hallucinogenic during one of these events to make him appear insane, and then distributed a list of names in his handwriting to make it seem as if he was planning more executions. Historically, through the work of some subtle rivals, Robespierre was soon represented to the people of France as a dangerous man, seeking to rule a dictatorship and establish himself as the god of a new religion, despite this not necessarily being the case. Robespierre became more isolated in his party as his allies feared him and the French people began to question the large amount of meaningless executions. As his party members turned on him, Robespierre tried to defend himself with speeches but was soon overwhelmed and arrested alongside his allies Augustin, Couton, Saint-Just, François Arion, and Le Bas by the convention. Soldiers from the Paris Commune freed Robespierre and his friends as they fled to l'Hôtel de Ville. In response, the convention ordered its military troops to capture them, branding them all fugitives to be executed without trial within 24 hours. As the commune defenders were cleared from l'hôtel, the convention's troops found a shocking sight upon their arrival. Augustin had thrown himself out of a window but had just broken both of his legs. Le Bas had committed suicide, Couton was found lying at the bottom of the staircase, and Robespierre appeared to have attempted suicide by shooting himself in the mouth. However, he only managed to shatter his lower jaw. Certain records claim he was shot by Charles-André Marda, but this is not confirmed. Assassin's Creed Unity instead showed him waiting in l'hôtel de ville to be saved by his ally Germain. However, he was instead intercepted by Arnaud and Elise. After refusing to give away the location of his master, Elise shot him in the mouth, telling him to write the location instead. Germain warned me about you. You're one of them, aren't you? An assassin. Not anymore. Where's Germain? Elise. We don't have much time. Where is Germain? I will never talk. Ah! Then write. Ah! Ah! Historically, the survivors, including Robespierre, were captured, and on July 28, 1794, they were executed without trial in La Place de la Révolution. It is said that before he was executed, the executioner removed the cloth that was holding Robespierre's jaw in place, which caused him to scream in agony until the blade fell and decapitated him. He was buried with his allies in a common grave until they were later transferred to the catacombs between 1844 and 1859. In summary, there were few clear differences between the in-game representation of Maximilien de Robespierre and his history. First, it should be clearly noted that he was not a member of the Templar Order, nor was he their ally historically. Secondly, the game showed him to be the one ordering the arrest of the Girondists, while Danton challenged him, when in reality they worked together to crush their rivals, with some historians claiming Robespierre may not have been in full accord with these executions, although they were arrested through the Jacobins by François Henriot, as was shown in the co-op mission. Thirdly, although Robespierre and the remaining Jacobins did have Danton and his allies executed, it was only partially in reason of their resistance to the heavy use of terror, but also because of financial and corruption-based allegations against the accused Jacobins. Fourthly, although Robespierre is believed to have appeared mad with power and dangerous near the end of the Reign of Terror, it was not because he was drugged by Elise and Arnaud. However, it should be noted that many historians claim that his rivals may have subtly planted information against him leading to his fall, very similarly to what Arnaud did during the Festival of the Supreme Being. Lastly, following his arrest and brief escape, although controversy still remains around the fact that Robespierre may or may not have tried to kill himself, it is safe to assume that it was not Elise de la Serre who shot him. When understanding the diverse historical interpretations of Maximilien de Robespierre, who is seen by some as a bloodthirsty tyrant and by others as a misunderstood or misrepresented politician for the people, I personally found that Assassin's Creed Unity gave us a unique interpretation which mixed both points of view. 
Despite the previously mentioned changes to his history, most of which were based in his incorporation into the Templar vs. Assassins plot, I was very interested in the way that they initially showed him as a politician against the corrupt individuals in Versailles, who then aligned his goals with the Templars, and was made to appear even more dangerous and extreme through the intervention of Arnaud and Elise, eventually leading to his death at the hands of the very terror he supported. For that reason, and for the accurate portrayal of his suppression of Jacques Roux, his support of removing the disgraced Mirabeau's remains from the Pantheon, and for the great twist put on both the wonderfully represented Festival of the Supreme Being and his infamous gunshot wound, after conducting all of my historical research, I rather enjoyed his twisted representation within Assassin's Creed Unity. With that final fact, we have finished another episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, I highly recommend you try out one of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you all for watching. Please leave any suggestions for future characters, groups, events, or locations from any of the Assassin's Creed games that you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you all in a future historical episode.